Hey buddy, Sam back once again in today's video, we're going to do a quick review of this bad boy, the Huawei Mate X Pro 2020 edition. So shall we get into it? Okay, so this is just going to be a review from a perspective of someone that's not really used Windows much over the past, what, probably say six to eight years or so. I know about it, I've dabbled with it, but I have honestly been more of a Mac user myself. So this is coming from a Mac user's perspective in terms of the hardware, the software, and what you get for the overall package. Now I'm actually gonna start off with some of the negatives because I like to get that stuff out of the way. Let's get onto the positivity. Uh, the biggest letdown for me, and again, coming from Mac OS, it's just a, it's a bit of a hindrance, is Windows. Now, Huawei can, obviously, they've made the hardware, they've give a lot of kind of software in there as well. They've got, like, their PC manager, which, to be honest with you, actually makes things a lot easier. What I'll do is I'll show you that software just a moment or two, and in regards to updating your, your drivers, some of the software on the actual uh, laptop itself, it made it a bit of more of an easier kind of experience than going through just the basic Windows update. But I think Windows itself is, for me personally, is the only letdown for this machine. If you're a Windows user, that's not an issue for you. If you love Windows and you've used Windows all your life, and you have Windows through and through, then boom. I can highly recommend this laptop. If you're looking to transfer from Mac to Windows, and you're not too sure of a Windows... This could be a good device because it gives you all the benefits that you've used to in terms of high quality hardware. Obviously, you just got to deal with the Windows side of it after that. Right, so the hardware negatives, again, not, not a lot of them, but for me personally, it's the fact that there's only two of the Type-C connectors. I would have liked to see maybe three or maybe even just give me four of them. Instead of what they've done is actually get you get two Type-C connectors. This is a Thunderbolt, and you also get the headphone jack. And on the other side, you just get a full USB um, Type-A port. Personally, as, as much as it's nice to have it there, I would have liked probably another Type-C as well. Or maybe even just give me two Type-Cs on this side, two on the other, and the headphone jack. But hey, that's just my personal preference. And the reason for that is because when you charge your device... Obviously, sometimes, let's say it charges at this side, your charge has got to go all the way around and plug into there. So I would have liked it to be able to charge either side on that. that I think that would have been a really nice kind of a option on there. So if your charge is here, you plug it in, job done, open it up, and away you go. Whereas, because the charge is at this side, you've got no option. You've got to kind of pull your cable around. And it's just a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Now, the good news is, that's the negatives. Yeah, there are not a lot of neg negatives you are going to be getting when you do pick up this device. Um, one of the positives for me is the bloody colour. I mean, come on, how nice is that? Yeah, this is called the emerald green. You can also get it in, I think, the normal silvery space grey kind of colour. But if you're going to pick one up, you might as well pick up the nice emerald green one because no one's going to be thinking, wow, is that a, is that a MacBook? I'll say it, yep. Is that a MacBook? You're not going to be saying that with this bad boy because look at it, it is an absolutely beautiful colour. Again, it's it comes off as more of a green in person. It's looking a little bit more bluish on my camera and I think that's just because of the actual uh, colour levels with regards to the purple in there as well. But in terms of the green, it is a really nice kind of, it's subtle but yet very elegant. That's kind of how I would put it. So obviously it's beautiful, it looks nice, the colour is great. But how does it feel in terms of like in the hand feel? It feels very, very premium, which it should do. You know, the retail price should start at, well, for this particular one, is normally 1700 It's on offer at the moment for 1500 So, I mean, if you do want to pick one of these up, then I will put links down below, and you can actually go check that out. Wow. But in terms of the way it feels and the overall kind of just kind of, you know, does it feel like it's worth it? I would definitely say yes. So, I'm actually just going to lift it up here. So here's the actual nice looking keyboard on there. It's a very nice size trackpad. It's a multi trackpad as well. So in terms of, you know, kind of doing your gestures and stuff like that, works absolutely perfect. And obviously with me being a Mac, a kind of Mac user and a Mac fan, the gestures themselves, it's just nice to come from, you know, from Mac to Windows and still have this very nice trackpad. Um, you couldn't really get it much bigger, let's be honest. I mean, they could have made it wider, but then it looked a little silly. But yeah, the actual trackpad is definitely a plus point for me. And then going into the keyboard, 
It's kind of like, I think they call it a chiclet style. There's not a lot of kind of uh, feedback in terms of the way it goes down. Obviously, it's a very thin device, but I do love the fact that it just, it feels lovely to type on. Again, I would like a little bit more travel on there. Yeah, travel, that's the one. But not much you can really do about that. Again, you've got a very thin device. There's only so much room you can actually do with uh, a device that's going to be as thin as that. Yeah, that is absolutely bonkers, isn't it? But yeah, keyboard itself, very lovely to type on. Another one of the major wins for me is this button here. Yes, this is the power button, but it also acts as the fingerprint scanner as well. As you log into your device via Windows Hello, and it just, it's flawless. I wish that Huawei and other manufacturers actually go back to using this on mobile phones because it works so much better than those in the screen, facial recognition. Personally, just give me a button or a little uh, sensor like that and job done, you know. It's it's ease of use for me. That's what, you know, you're paying for something and you want it to be easy. That makes life so much easier. And kind of just to show you how fast it actually is, if I turn the screen back on, hopefully you can kind of see that there. So if I just tap on it, boom, I'm in there straight away. So you can we'll show you really quickly again. So let's turn it off. So just tap it on there, turn it off, sorry. And then to turn it on, just put your finger on there, press the button in, boom, straight in. So yeah, <laughs> it kind of goes into like hibernation sleep mode. Put your finger on there where you press it, it goes boom, log you straight in because it's got your fingerprint and it's the power button. For me, that's something that all laptops should have nowadays. And I think it should be integrated into just normal keyboards for desktop computers as well. It makes life so much easier. Next up is going to be the screen. Now again, it's going to be hard to kind of show you just because of my current setup, but the actual screen itself is very vibrant. Um, again, I've got lights kind of coming straight onto it, so it doesn't probably look as vibrant as it probably should do now. Let me just see if it's cranked up all the way, because it is on the, currently on battery. Let's just put best performance on there. And then let's crank that brightness up. There we go. So you probably see that a bit better now. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, looks lovely, doesn't it? Now, the cool thing is it is a touch screen. So yes, it is a full, a full touch screen as well. So if you want to kind of log load in something, an example, you've got the PC manager. So I should click on that one. Oop, click out that one here as well. And boom, this is the PC manager I told you about a little bit ago. So you can actually click start, go to system check, driver management, my services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So system check, you basically go, okay, is it working fully? So click check, click check on that. It's then going to go through everything individually and see what's going to work and what's not. You might be able to hear some of it as well. So you're testing the audio, testing the fingerprint, testing the Bluetooth, the RAM, etc., etc. It does a full diagnostic of your device and then boom, tells you whether there's any problems or not. And as you can see here, no issues found for me. Happy days and away we go. So yeah, the screen itself it is an absolute beauty of a screen. It's 3,000 by 200, by 200, 3,000 by 2,000 in terms of the actual pixel uh, density. And it is done where you can actually put two windows side by side. I think it's called three by two. So you can have two full windows side by side and you're not kind of having to cut it off. It just kind of fits on there perfectly. And yeah, I've absolutely loved it. Again, with it being a touch screen, it's something that coming from my MacBook, I was like, how am I going to use it? And I used it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Right, I'm just going to get this one out of the way really quickly because some people have been asking me if regards to gaming on it. Can you game on it? You can game on it, but set your expectations a little lower than you probably would like to. It has got an NVIDIA MX250 in there, which is not the worst kind of graphics card in the world, but it's not designed to be playing your high-end games. So as you can see, uh, I actually did install Fortnite on there. It's a game that actually, yeah, by kind of enjoy playing Fortnite every now and again on my Xbox and I figured I'll give it a crack. Now I'll crank the settings up to, you know, like the, the, the good settings, the top settings, Epic, and it runs at like 17 frames a second. So I had to turn them all down, put the settings all the way down to the bottom. You can average around 50 to 60 frames per second. Um, textures don't look that great in the game at that point, but put 3D resolution up, it looks pretty good. But again, I wouldn't be looking to buy this as a gaming laptop. It's an Ultrabook. It's not a gaming laptop. So don't be buying it thinking, you know what, I'm I'm going to become the next Call of Duty champion on that. 
you can play Call of Duty, you can play Fortnite, you can play your games on it, but set your expectations that you're not going to have the full graphics on there. You are going to have to turn them down, but at that point, you are still going to get a, good, a very good experience. Uh, the one thing that, I, won't, I don't know if it's a net, or I guess it kind of would be a negative as such, is that it does get hot pretty quickly. So, and I think that might be down to the cooling. Now, on the Matebook 14 AMD edition, it actually has two, like a big fan cut out here with two fans. On here, the only cooling you're really getting is down the side here, down the side here, and then where it opens up, you get a little uh, fans coming out there to really get rid of the hot air. It does seem to get a little hot when you are trying to play games. So again, set your expectations a little lower than you might want. Honest, you know, honestly, on that one, you can game on it, but you're not going to be playing your AAA titles at 150 frames per second at 4K quality and blah, blah. It's just not going to happen. But if you run the game at like a 1080p resolution, which does look fantastic on this screen itself, and again, low those kind of qualities, then yeah, you're going to be happy with it. It will be able to game for you. All right, let's talk about the battery life really quickly as well. Uh, they rate it for 10 hours. My personal use, I've probably, again, I've not had it off charge every single day. I have used it plugged in for a lot of it as well, but I decided to do kind of some tests, just to, you know, I did two days, just not plugging it at all, and I probably got around seven hours, so it's a little short of the 10 hours that they do quote. It's around the seven hour mark is what I got on both of my days for my testing. So I think it's very acceptable. I'm coming from a MacBook that, that quotes around 10 hours and I get about three. So yeah. Very impressed with the part of life up to what I've been used to. But again, probably not going to get that full 10 hours. You might get 10 hours if you're just kind of maybe browsing the web or just watching some video. But if you're going to be playing around with it and doing some other stuff here or there, then again, probably around 7 hours ish is what I would get in on a daily basis. Now, the device I've been rocking here it is the top end model. So this one actually comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 1 terabyte of storage. It's the 8 core processor, the Core i7. Uh, which is it's the the 10510U, and it's uh, boosts up to I think it's 4.2 gigahertz. And again, performance on the actual laptop itself has been stellar. Again, slight issue with regards to getting a little hotter than I would like it to, but it's never got too hot where I can't actually use the device itself. Now, if you are going to be watching any kind of movies or again playing those games, and you don't use headphones, it does have the speakers down here, which I believe on a previous model are actually underneath it. Now they are here. And they sound a lot better than I were expecting because, let's be honest, they're not very big, but they pack a pretty decent punch. So if you are watching a movie or you're watching some YouTube videos, you're not going to need external speakers. The ones built into it are going to be perfectly fine for everyday use. Also, let's talk about the webcam really quickly because, you know, some people love it, some people hate it. I love the idea of it. Um, in theory, it's a fantastic idea. I just wish that they could... I wish you could kind of change the angle a little bit. So the actual the webcam itself just pops out there. So if you bring it a little bit closer, you can just see that. Yeah, it's again, it's not the most flattering image in the world. Now, it is a one megapixel image, so it only does 720p video. Not the best kind of quality video you're going to be getting, but for the form factor, for the privacy, I take that in all honesty. And again, it's not bad 720p, it's just not the best 720p. And I think that's about it. I think when I wrap up the review in terms of that one there, some people asked me to do some geek bench scores here and do some other kind of benchmark scores there. Honestly, I'd rather just kind of give you how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And for me personally, it's done everything I would like it to do. But that's it, people. That's my review of the Huawei MateBook X Pro 2020 edition. Again, a bit of a different kind of uh, review you might see from some people that will go through a geek bench here or another benchmark there, etc., etc. This is just my take on it, why I feel like it is. Um, and if you have enough value in my opinion on it, there you go. You've got it all at once. But if you have any questions with regards to this or anything else, you know what to do by now. You can hit me put a comment down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. It is very much appreciated. And go on, subscribe. It's free. Honestly, it's free. <laughs> anyway, once again, I want to say thank you for watching. And you'll hopefully see me. Well, if you won't see me, you'll definitely see these puppies. And you'll definitely hear me in my next video. 
Cheers, everyone.